hell is a pit full of horror and misery, and all that the tongue can tell is a mere particle of what the condemned shall suffer. For they shall have weeping and gnashing of teeth, a stink in their noses, a voice full of sights and terror in their ears, ferrers on their hands and feet, and a burning fire in their limbs. That's hell for you. It's Halloween, the night when the gates of hell are opened and all the demons and ghosts and witches are allowed out for about 12 hours, but they must be back by first cockcrow in the morning. If they're not back, the gates of hell are closed and they're destined to wander the earth for a whole year as tormented souls. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Basically, Halloween, or Samhain as it was called, was a Celtic festival. In those days, people worshipped a god which was called the sun. And at least you could see it and you could feel it and it brought life. And of course, around October time, it started to disappear. And so one of the best ways of attracting it back was to light bonfires. That's what they did. And that's what Halloween's all about. It was also a festival to celebrate the harvest for the country folk, uh, to get in all of the crops and basically a celebration. And then, of course, battening down for the winter. Christianity was actually established as the Roman church by the Emperor Constantine, who actually was a pagan and celebrated Mithras, which was a, a pagan god. Um, his mum, though, was um, the keeper of the cross, St Helen, a good Christian. And he realised that mum's religion was going somewhere. And so he hijacked it and called it the Roman Church. And he realised that it was a very good way of controlling us through fear. And he invented all of the terrors that have kept us under control for the best part of 2,000 years. Christianity became the only legal religion in the Roman Empire and became all-powerful. This, of course, was a terrible blow to all the pagans that were quite happily worshipping the sun and the moon, dancing around naked, talking to the trees, and generally being at one with the earth. The word pagan is actually derived from the Latin word paganus, which means country dweller. Paganism is actually the world's oldest religion. It predates Christianity by thousands of years. It had no evil. Everyone was born innocent instead of born a sinner. There was no such thing as God, the devil, heaven or hell. And life operated in cycles and was itself a cycle. All objects around us, sun, moon, stars and all the forces of nature were part of this life force and was worthy of our respect. We were at one with the earth. We came from Mother Earth and we would one day return to it. Unlike Christianity, which of course was male dominated, the old religion gave women an exalted position as a fertility goddess and had a great belief in the wisdom of women. To keep an even balance, there was, of course, a horned hunter god, male, of course. These are the people who then and now held on to the old ways much longer. The country people. Those who knew how to interact with the powers of the earth were considered the wise ones, the cunning ones, the wise ones of the village who practised nothing more sinister than curing people through a knowledge of herbs, drugs the working of nature, ESP and psychology through the clever use of incantations and the use of rhymes and prayers to invoke a certain reaction in people. Herein lies the key to what has been called the old religion. It was the cult of the wise and in Celtic referred to as Wiccacraft. The emphasis was put more on the feminine side of life and the mother goddess was worshipped. The pentagram, etched in blood in so many horror films, is nothing more than the pagan symbol 
for the feminine side of nature. Christianity fed on fear and soon gained power and control. It started hijacking the old religions, festivals and beliefs to help convert its more stubborn adherents. What the church could not convert or steal, it demonised. The horn god of hunting was turned into the devil. The mother goddess was demoted and the church became a male-dominated institution and sex became a dirty word. No one danced around the maypole anymore. In fact, no one had fun and nobody talked to the trees anymore. Everything that country folk did was looked upon by the church as suspicious. They would gather together to celebrate the four main festivals, which were May Eve, Lamas, All Hallows Eve and Candlemas. The most famous, of course, being All Hallows Eve, which celebrated the harvest. This was the end of a very busy time in the countryside, and so it was a chance to celebrate the end of hard work and enjoy some of the fruits of their labours. At this time in the year, the days were growing shorter and the sun god, as I said, seemed to die. And to compensate for that, what they did was lit bonfires and tried to entice the sun to return. Do remember that the followers of the old religion were originally nothing more than an agricultural cult whose daily lives and survival relied on the fields and the farm. These gatherings were a community or brotherhood. The gatherings were known as covens or convention. The festivals known as sabbats and esbats were celebrations of the full moon. These folk knew only too well that the magnetic power of the full moon greatly increased the extrasensory perception of mankind. They believed in ley lines and earth energy which they harnessed for their own physical and spiritual benefit by building temples and stone circles at significant points along those energy lines, just in the same way as the Chinese do with pagodas and the acupuncturist works on the human body. The Christian church came along and hijacked many of the pagan sacred sites, built churches on them, they were energy sites, cut and pasted their religious festivals and called them holy days or holidays. Even the Vatican is built on a pagan site. In the old religion, women carried a broom, a symbol of domestic order and cleanliness. As these women came from the villages and remote farmhouses, their brooms were part of their everyday tools. Even the English word for these suspicious country folk, which was villain, they clung longer to the worship of nature. It was perverted by the church and changed from villain to villain. The old religion had always believed that man's body contained a powerful reservoir which could be used by the coven or community to create a power concentration similar to that of prayer in a church with a full congregation. Psychic ability was always highly rated amongst the Wiccans and so mediums were considered to be carrying out the work of the devil. Psychic or sensitive people doing unusual things within the community were dangerous radicals. Any competitor to the church could not control, had to be destroyed. Many of the Wiccans in the local villages clung to the old faith, paganism. The word Wiccan, of course, means wise one of the village. And it, of course, it had to be destroyed. Wickercraft was rebranded witchcraft. Witchcraft was termed evil just because it could not coexist with the conventional church. Thus began hundreds of years of persecution and accusation linking witchcraft with the devil. Until the 15th century, witchcraft had just about been tolerated by the church. And then Pope Innocent VIII changed all that when he issued a papal bull of 1484 when he urged the clergy to assist in a new mission to combat the heretical depravities of witches. The floodgates were opened and the burnings and the hangings and the torture began. 
Every woman with a wrinkled face, a furrowed brow, a hairy lip, a gobber tooth, a skullcap on her head, a dog or a cat by her side, is not only suspected, but pronounced a witch. Satan, the Prince of Darkness, was the title given to the devil by the medieval church, and the witch was his friend. What followed was a long and incredible parade of human folly, cruelty and perversion of justice, and of course death. It was quite enough to be denounced as a follower of the old religion, to be imprisoned and then tortured to gain a confession. At first, they just told the truth about their religion and its traditions, but that was not sufficient. It did not fit in with what their persecutors had wanted to hear. The story they were looking for was that of an involvement with the devil and his army of demons and a confession of treason against the church and the state. Once the world was swarming with heretics, now it seemed to be full of witches. During two and a half centuries, witch fever was commonplace throughout all of Europe. Nowhere more so than in Germany, where more than a 100,000 supposed witches were burned at the stake. There was even a guide available for witch finders called Malleus Maleficorum, or the Hammer of the Witches, setting out the guidelines for interrogation techniques. The authors were two Dominican friars, Kramer and Sprenger, who were both ruthless witch finders. England hit an all-time low in 1563 when Queen Elizabeth I passed a new statute ordering the death penalty for witches, sorcerers and enchanters. Previously, they would only have received a prison sentence. The suspected witch were now to be charged under civil law instead of ecclesiastical law, which meant that they could be hanged rather than burned if found guilty. After this time, no more witches were burnt in England, but this rule did not apply over the border in Scotland. When King James VI of Scotland became James I of England, a new wave of persecution against all those who had practised witchcraft was introduced. James was a strong believer in the craft and thought all those who practised it were evil. In 1604, he persuaded Parliament to revoke Queen Elizabeth's Witchcraft Act for a more severe one, making it a capital offence if a victim of a witch was injured in any way. The Act was extended to include a number of European notions of witchcraft, including those of a pact with and worship of the devil. This Act remained in force in this country until 1763. How many poor, old, unfortunate ladies and some men were tortured, imprisoned and executed? Your grandma, your grandpa, for nothing more than being psychic, owning a cat or being a faith healer or clinging to the old faith. Just as Catholics did when the Church of England was invented by a spiteful, greedy monarch, Henry VIII, and witch hunting started again. This time it was not pagans being persecuted, but Roman Catholics. This time it was the old folk in the countryside and the remote villagers who still remained Roman Catholic, like Pendle and East Anglia. Their only fault was that they were clinging to what they believed was the old faith, their true faith. However, this time it was the Catholics being tortured and executed by Puritans who had invented stories to remove them. These folk were not evil as they did not have any deal with the devil, nor could they summon demons or evil spirits. Due to the terror that they went through, the torture that they underwent and the terrible death that they met with at the end of a hangman's rope, they may well just be a little angry and as a result may still be here haunting, waiting for justice. This loving God has created a fair amount of torture, death, pain, anguish, war and suffering in his time. He certainly does have a lot to answer for. Anyway, who says God's a man? You see, the church's main weapon has always been fear. Oh, he's a good God-fearing man. Um, why should we fear God? 
I thought he was all love and kindness. The church invented all manner of things to terrify medieval man into submission. It invented hellfire, damnation, purgatory, the devil, the antichrist, demons, witches, seven deadly sins, four mortal sins, the Ten Commandments and Judgment Day. This, of course, terrified people to such an extent that they've decided to stay behind because they were terrified of burning in hell, knowing full well that St Peter would never let them go through the pearly gates into heaven. And, of course, Halloween is the time when they're around again. Or are they? I don't think so. Do sleep well. Don't have nightmares. <laughs>